we have a varied group of young people with three different size cellos. We have Rachel with a, with a quarter size cello. We have Lydia with a half size cello. We have Gabe with a three quarter. And we have Jayun with a seven eighth, okay? And of course, each child has a slightly different proportion between the length of their leg from their hip down to the ground. So the placement of the end pin will be slightly different according to each child's personal shape. As we can see with Lydia, when she's standing, the scroll arrives between her mouth and her nose. For Gabe to be comfortable, it's coming, the middle of the scroll is up to his nose and we're almost up to eye level with the top of the scroll. Now, it's nose level. It depends on how they hold it. Now here's Rachel. Now we see Rachel and it's coming up to her mouth. Okay, and this is a quarter size cello. And we have Jayun with a seven eighths. And this cello really is a bit large for her. I personally would not have picked this exact cello size for her, but it's a beautiful instrument and she's managing very well. So this is a cello where it comes up to her eyebrows. But as you can see, the basic positioning of the cello is between the mouth and the nose, ideally, I would say on average. Now, Lydia, would you please sit down, sweetheart? And let's show, this is an example of a rock stop, what we call a rock stop. I like straps better than rock stops, the sliding rock stops, because these were sure will hold on the ground better than, the, there are many rock, supposed rock stops, but they never stop their rock slides, and most cellists wind up sliding all over the floor with them, so they can be a problem. Okay, Lydia, so let's put, your rock stop down. And here is your dad arriving with a much better chair than this one. So we're gonna put this down. Now I recommend for nine to 10 year olds and up, folding chairs that you can get at stores like Target usually work out very well because they have flat bottoms and they're light and they're easily transportable. Of course, with younger children, we do have to look for stools of varying height. Okay, so Lydia, why don't you stand up, sweetheart, with your cello? And now let's show everybody a really good cello position. Why don't you sit down, okay? So what we usually do is start with our feet in a V, then we come out, feet pointing out straight, okay, in a straight line, and then Lydia, I like to feel as if I were standing up playing the violin, but we're playing our instrument. So we're sitting down on the chair, but the feeling is always an upward feeling. Okay, is this, I think you want your cello back another hole. I think the, the rock stop is a little too long. No, no, I would think, no, no, honey, back here. How does that feel? Good. Yeah. Let's see, let's put it up a little more. Okay, now as you can see, it's very important in cello positioning that the instrument, the bouts of the instrument hit the left la leg slightly above the knee where we can really control holding the cello and the right leg inside. Now, what I really like to work on at all times is left leg and then add the right leg. I'll show you. This is really essential because it's essential that everyone who's playing feel that they're really in control of the cello so that the arms are really free. So Lydia and then Gabe, everybody try this. Let's go. Left, feel your left leg on the ground. Open wide, open your arms, your legs wider than the cello. Cello on the left leg, add your right leg, and then really hold the cello, okay? So you're totally comfortable. Now here, Lid, put your, put your arms down here, okay? Really hold the cello really well, Jay and everyone. Okay, then it's essential to be able to, with the left hand, slide down from the bridge 
back down into first position. So you put like a toilet paper roll, and we'll see this in a few minutes, in your C-shaped hand. Everyone show the C-shaped hand, too, that we need to have when we're playing, okay? Wonderful, Gabe. Let's see, perfect. Then in a little while, we're gonna put a roll, a toilet roll, and then we're gonna have you rolling up and down the string. Let's try, make a C, Rach, make the C. Now let's try everyone to roll up and down the string. Now what I like to do for this is put my thumb on top. Let's go like this, let's put our thumbs on top. Right now, slide up and down the strings this way, okay? That's it. Perfect, so that you're really always feeling the C in your fingers at all times. Bravo, Lydia. Perfect, okay? Now, for the left hand, again, as we said, it's always better to go from high down to low. Let's make sure that the thumbs are in the middle of the hand, that you're always feeling your two thumbs, thumb on the bow, thumb on the left hand, working together with the middle finger. Let me see, Rach. Fantastic, come on, you're my model. Let me see, that's right. Okay, fantastic. Let's see. So when we come down into first, first position, you want to be really sure, everyone, that the thumb slides behind your middle finger, okay? Because this happens very often, you'll see with young people on the cello. They come down and they put the thumb behind the first finger, and then we get into all sorts of tension problems that are really difficult to break. And of course, on the cello, what we need to see for all extensions is this feeling of the second finger and the thumb carrying the hand forward. So we're always moving the hand from the middle of the hand. Like on a seesaw, we're always balanced from the middle, and then any opening that we have to do is from the middle, and it's two, three, and four. The stretch is never between one and four, but always between one and two, and that's what does all the work. Now, with stretching, just so you know, it's always one and two. Now when we're going backwards, two, three, and four stay forward. The thumb is in the middle of the hand, and we point back towards the ear. But you never shift the whole hand backward when you're stretching backwards for a B-flat. Everybody try and do that. Let's get in first position. First position, and now everybody point back. Right, okay. Okay, and first finger, honey, really get the fingertip on the A string, that's good. Very, very good. Wonderful, okay? So that's the hand position. Now let's just show everyone. The other major position on the thumb, of course, is thumb position. Now this, there can be some difficulties in thumb position because many people have what we call banana thumbs, that their thumbs have a natural tendency to, to lean backwards. So the most important element to, in setting up the thumb position is remembering to slightly bend the thumb. Never have a straight thumb. Actually, anything straight doesn't really exist on a string instrument. There always has to be a slight curve. So I'd like to see everybody first bend your thumb slightly. And now let's put the bent thumb up in thumb. That's right. And now let's get our C fingers. Perfect, thumb on two strings, thumb on two strings, slightly bent. And always, always bravissima, Rach. You can even raise your knuckles more. I want you always to be aware of your knuckles. Everyone, be aware of the knuckles at all times on the cello. 